evening. A very warm welcome to all the listeners to this edition of North East Diary. Here we bring you the latest developments from India's unexplored and beautiful the North East re- North East region. Friends, in this day and age, when processed, ready-to-eat fast food is easily available, how many of us pay attention to nutrition? Do we realize the importance of eating seasonal and local food? Food which is locally sourced and organic plays a key role in providing nutrition to our body as well as sustaining local economy and the environment. Well, in this week's edition of Northeast Diary, we have food for thought for all. In the very beginning of our journey today, we'll go over to Nagaland. Blessed with fertile lands and mesmerizing landscapes, Zamami village in Nagaland is particularly known for its rich produce of cabbage and potatoes. The village has seen an extensive growth in the production of organic vegetables in the last decade. Recognizing that agriculture is the most important economic activity, the Zamami village council has also been promoting organic farming since 2005. further being declared a vegetable village by the Nagaland Horticulture Department in the year 2010 Zawami has lived up to its name by not only cultivating vegetables which are purely organic but also producing them on a large scale well our kohima correspondent asanu has filed this report The success story of Zawame as a vegetable village has been overwhelming for more reasons than one. Not only does the cabbage and potato cultivation provides fresh vegetables to accompany a meal, but also generates extra income for the community of farmers who otherwise do not have any other means of income. Interestingly, a good number of school dropouts have also found a new purpose in life, even as they are hired for tasks such as packaging and loading. Parents who earlier struggled to send their children to school for lack of sufficient income can now afford to keep them in better schools and colleges more educated youth and professional emerging from the village are testament to this fact there are clear signs of the farming community in the village living more comfortable lives as they find economic stability through cultivation of cabbage and potatoes currently at least 300 households in the village are said to be engaged in cabbage cultivation as a village council chairman vivoto dome says Cabbage cultivation has enabled many farmers in the village become self-sufficient. Many households in the village have found a good source of income by cultivating cabbage and potatoes. Potatoes are harvested twice a year, first in May and then in July and August. Cabbage harvest is usually done once a year and among those living in the village, about 300 households are engaged in cabbage cultivation. One of the benefits I've seen is parents being able to bring up their children with the income generated from vegetable farming, while some have been able to build and construct new houses. This year, unfortunately because of the lockdown, farmers could not market any of their produce from their first harvest during May, June, and suffered loss in terms of lack of rupees. Thankfully, with better situation in August, the village along with a core committee set up for their welfare we have been able to sell their produce cabbage cultivation has especially enabled parents to provide better education for their children who have gone on to become somebody in the society the farmers community of zawame village has skillfully mastered the art which involves several processes many people would also testify as to how well they enjoy the healthy and organic vegetables that comes from this village and the neighboring areas While the village is a sheer example of a community of people whose very way of life is defined by agriculture, the cultivation of this organic vegetable is also a sight to see, especially during the harvesting period. Located about 80 kilometers away from the state capital, Zawame village is richly blessed with natural resources. Scenic landscape and also has a great potential for tourism in many aspects. Among many places of interest, the village is home to Kapur Mudzer Peak, which is one of the top five highest mountain in Nagaland, standing at an altitude of 2,620 meters above sea level. The peak gives you a stupendous view of the entire Saramati Range in the east, Jaffa Peak in the south, apart from Kohima and several other villages of Nagaland and Manipur. This is Asanya for Northeast. for AIA News Kohima From picturesque Nagaland now we go over to the land of verdant tea gardens that is Assam 
The Education Department in Assam has devised a unique meal plan for midday meal scheme, which will contain traditional delicacies. This is an admirable bid to provide good nutrition to the young school children. Our Guwahati correspondent Manas Pratim Sharma brings us all the details. The Education Department in Assam is to include egg biryani and Assamese delicacy laru pitha in midday meals for school students. Principal Secretary in the Education Department B. Kalan Sakravati said that in a bid to add nutritional value, egg biryani and traditional dishes will be served to students. He also said that nutri gardens are being set up in the school premises so that locally available vegetables and fruits can be planted. Mr. Sagravarti further mentioned that the Education Department has taken steps to open bank accounts to 45 lakh students. He said that instruction has been issued to the banks to open zero balance account. Mr. Sagravarti added that along with bank accounts, other cards will also be issued to school students. We are starting in Assam opening of bank accounts for children to all the banks in the state of Assam because we believe that students should be in a position to understand what is saving. Government gives a lot of scholarships, government gives a lot of benefits through direct benefit transfers. All these can go into the bank account of the students and this money over a period of time will help the students in their future education and future uh, business and ventures and will give them a lot of stability and an identity and therefore a direction has been given that all students bank account should be open in the state of Assam. For Northeast Diary, Manas Patim Sarma reporting for Air News from Guwahati. Since the month of September is observed as Poshan Maha, now let's see what's happening in Sikkim in this month. Nutrition-sensitive agriculture resources and innovations has been an important part of the ongoing Poshan Mass celebrations in South Sikkim District. The innovative approach to address nutrition deficiencies has been launched in Nafan Block and will be taken across the district. Let's listen to more details from our Sikkim correspondent, Namo Dikshit. Nutrition-sensitive agriculture is a food-based approach to agriculture development. Senior scientist and head of KCV Gyan Kendra Namsang, IP Seva Koti speaks about implementation of this targeted intervention. Firstly, we are focusing on nutrition sensitive agriculture. I would like to explain to you all that what is nutrition sensitive agriculture. It is a food based approach to agriculture development that puts nutritionally rich foods, dietary diversity and food fortification or supplementation at the center to overcome malnutrition and micronutrient deficiencies. This we are targeting the various age categories of like children up to the age of 6 years, adolescent girls, pregnant women and even lactating women. This nutrition sensitive agriculture, this approach we will be giving trainings, awareness to Aganwadi workers, centers, even farm women, women SSGs and even to FPOs located around BSC Namthang. This will be our first step and then we will move into the entire district as per our resources. We have distributed nutritionally rich vegetables, seasonal fruits, seed seedlings to the Aganwadi workers and centers, to all the 47 Aganwadi centers of Namthang BSC. We have even distributed to them gardening tools to the Aganwadi workers so that it will help them one model kitchen garden at the Aganwadis. We have even showed them on a method demonstration of model kitchen garden at the Krishi Began Kendra farm at two villages that is one at Parbing Khop and one at Ruchung and even at Aganwadi center so that all women, children, rural youth who come and visit the Aganwadi centers get a concept and idea about kitchen gardenings and they even may replicate that at their individual homes. With a focus on improving nutritional outcomes through locally available farm produce, gardening tools have also been distributed to Aganwadi workers along with method demonstration of model kitchen garden for replication at homes. With Saikat Sarka, this is Namo Dikchit for North East Diary for AIR News Sikkim. The Himalayan belt which spreads from Jammu and Kashmir to the last corner of the northeast region of the country is well known as a hot spot of rich biodiversity, ecology and vegetation. The huge potential in horticulture can accelerate the economy of the region. 
Different studies reveal that the climatic conditions coupled with fertile soil make this area hospitable for the cultivation of a wide range of high-value horticultural crops. This can augment 70% income and livelihood to the rural people of the region. And of course, in our series, you've already heard about Nagaland, Sikkim and Assam. And now we go over to Tripura. Here is a report from Tripura revealing a story of a farmer who started apple cultivation and found the road to success. His hard work is displaying an example of Atmanirbhar Bharat's vision. So let's quickly hear to Reena, our Agartala correspondent. A 26 years old Mithan Sarkar or Bamutia village near Agartala has fulfilled the dream of the people of Tripura by growing apples in the orchard of this non-traditional apple growing soil. The local people who have tasted apples from the orchard said that the taste is similar to that of the Himachal variety of apples. Sharing his experience with AIA News, Mithan said, हिमाचल का जो यरली जो इनकम होता है एप्पल के ऊपर वो 4000 करोड़ का है तो हमारा त्रिपुरा भी पहाड़ी स्टेट है इसमें एप्पल हो सकता है कोई दिक्कत नहीं जैसे बामोटिया में हुआ है हर जगह पे हो सकता है बेकार भी इससे सलूशन हो सकता है मेरी बगान में भी दो चार लेबर काम कर रहा है मैं और भी बगान बड़ा करना चाह रहा हूं त्रिपुरा में मेरे ख्याल से रबर के बाद दूसरे स्टेज पे होगा इकोनॉमी की तरह से इसमें अभी 192 पेड़ लगाया था मैंने पहले अभी 173 पेड़ है सब में 80% में फ्लावरिंग हुआ था फर्स्ट टाइम हम सबसे फ्रूट नहीं ले सकते क्योंकि फर्स्ट टाइम फ्रूट लेंगे तो फ्रूट का कास वीक हो जाएगा तो नेक्स्ट यार फ्रूट कम आएगा तो इसलिए मैंने सब तोड़ दिया था कुछ पेड़ में रखा था सैंपल के लिए टेस्टिंग के लिए तो उस जो पेड़ में था करीब 20 से 30 किलो होगा फ्लावरिंग का टाइम है जनवरी टू फरवरी मैच्योरिटी टाइम है जून जुलाई हमारा इस वैरायटी में एक फायदा है क्योंकि हिमाचल कश्मीर से जब फ्रूट निकलता है तो वो लेट होता है हमारे है वेदर भी थोड़ा चेंज है उनसे तो इसीलिए हमारे है पे उसको एक एक दिन में महीने पहले निकलता है इसीलिए हमको मार्केट करने से भी कोई दिक्कत नहीं होगा प्लस मार्केट में रेट भी बहुत ज्यादा मिलेगा विद द इंस्टेंस ऑफ द फर्स्ट एप्पल ग्रोवर मेनी अनएम्प्लॉयड यूथ्स हैव स्टार्टेड कांटेक्टिंग मिथन सरकार शोइंग देयर इंटरेस्ट टू कल्टीवेट एप्पल्स सम ऑफ देम आल्सो वांटेड अबाउट द मार्केटिंग पोटेंशियलिटी ऑफ एप्पल्स व्हाइल मिथन आर्ग्यूड दैट द त्रिपुरा एप्पल विल नॉट फेस एनी मार्केटिंग प्रॉब्लम ही सेड दैट एक्सपोर्ट मार्केट्स विद नेवरिंग बांग्लादेश कैन आल्सो बी टेप इन द फ्यूचर बट ही सेड कल्टीवेशन and subsequently production are needed to go up to a large extent across the state. This is Rina Nomaitem for Nordis Diary from AIR News, Agatala. Well, listeners, the world is going through a hard time and of course we know that COVID-19, the pandemic, has redefined normalcy. At a time when the normal education process is at a standstill due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Ram Krishna Mission Centers of Shillong and Sohra recently launched Wi-Fi-based online courses that aim to do away with an internet connection and enable students to access the free contents of online course which are prepared by the mission. A very, very novel initiative, you can say. And of course, here's a report from our Shillong correspondent, Rustam. Ram Krishna Mission is well known across the globe for providing support and help to the drowned Odin, as internet connectivity being a major issue in rural areas of the state. Ram Krishna Mission centers of Shillong and Sora demonstrated the technological capability of conducting online classes in the no internet zone by using intranet. Online academic classes of Hikai, which stands for Hybrid Interactive Knowledge Assimilation Initiative from classes 1 to 12, were recently launched in one of the remotest corners of the state. A Wi-Fi tower will replace the internet and the students will be able to perform two-way interaction with their teachers engaged in the Hikai online course. This technological leap will help to liquidate the digital divide between the urban and rural students to an extent. With internet connectivity a problem for rural masses, this unique initiative will help students in their online learning, said Swami Anurag Anand the brain behind this unique initiative. After discussion with the various experts, we came up this with this solution that we can create an intranet. And this intranet is created by fixing a tower that creates 
a Wi-Fi zone. Online courses have been designed by the best teachers and that very thing we are able to offer to the rural children and that way it is able to bridge the gap between the urban student and the rural student. So it's another great advantage. So far, students from over 55 different schools including the Ram Krishna Mission Schools and the Meghalaya Board of School Education have enrolled for the free online classes. Some of the features of this online learning program consists of pre-recorded lectures, quizzes, one-to-one -one interactions, besides assignments and others. This is Rusam for Nordis Diary from AIR News, Shillong. Well, from different parts of the Northeast, we brought you different stories regarding nutrition, also under the new normalcy defined by COVID-19. And here's now going to Mizoram with a very interesting story coming up from there. Human beings have had a close relationship with animals since time immemorial. Every human being will admit that the relationship has been and is still mostly full of conflict or else it is human domination upon animals leading to domesticating animals or petting animals. Well, in our country, many rights groups and social voluntary organizations are working for animal protection. These groups are working to rescue animals from different states. And let's listen to this dog rescue group working in Mizoram and our correspondent Irene has more details. Mizoram government has enacted the Animal Slaughter Bill 2020 to prevent slaughtering and to end cruelty against dogs, which has been going on for the meat trade. Not only the government, a few animal rescue groups have also decided themselves to save the dog, particularly the abused ones. ISOL-based JB Foundation is working for the protection of dogs. This organization is known for its work of rescuing the abused, ill-treated, orphaned, and malnourished dogs. The organization is also campaigning door-to-door -to, -door to educate the owners of dogs about their responsibility to their pets. An official of the organization said that their drive is also aimed at creating awareness on how abusing an animal is a criminal offense. The organization has its own animal health clinic named as JB Post Hospital in Aizol. So the dogs rescued by them are mostly given care and rehabilitated at their own hospital. Also when the pets are cured, they are handed over to an adoptee following a signed agreement. Talking to AIR News, the secretary of JB Foundation, Zion Hamoipuya, shared his thoughts and activities of the organization. The main mission of JB Foundation is to rescue and rehabilitate abused dogs from their owners and to educate dog owners how abusing an animal is a legal offense. And these rescued dogs are rehabilitated at JB Post Hospital. Since their conditions are usually bad, medical intervention is done and after that they are groomed, fed, nourished and given up for adoption. Many of the dogs have been found found loving homes. Adoption is done in writing to make sure the dog does not go through abuse for the second time. If this happens, then the dog may be rescued again. JB Foundation NGO also does its best to educate dog owners and raise awareness campaigns. He further said that in most cases, abused dogs come from broken homes and poverty-stricken families. Also, 4% of these rescue missions require legal intervention. The organization moving forward with a motto of a cause for paws has so far rescued about 500 dogs. Most of the rescue missions have been done after getting reports of abuse by individuals, neighbors and other people who have seen their sufferings, abuse or neglect. Mr. Zion has further claimed that the JB Foundation is building one of the largest foster homes for the dogs in the state. This is Irene for Nord East Diary from AIR News, Aizol. And now we have entered that segment of our show where we profile a personality for you. Well, we bring to you an interview with one of the best women footballers of the country. She was born and brought up in Manipur, which is known as the powerhouse of sports. Yangom Bala led the India women football team many times and has also been decorated with many prestigious awards in recognition of her talent. She's India's first professional female soccer player and is also in Scotland playing for Ranger FC. Here is the interview with Bala by our Imphal correspondent JJ Thokchom. 
नोट इस दही के श्रोताओं को नमस्कार आज हमारा पर्सनलिटी ऑफ द वीक में हम भारत के एक मशहूर स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन को लेके आया है जो मणिपुर स्टेट से बिलोंग करता है वुमेन फुटबॉलर नांगूम बाला भारत का पहला वुमेन फुटबॉलर है जो स्कॉटलैंड के एक क्लब के साथ प्रोफेशनल कंट्रैक्ट साइन करके अभी स्कॉटलैंड के एक क्लब में खेल रहा है नांगूम बाला जी स्कॉटलैंड के एक क्लब रेंजर्स एफसी में नंबर टेन जर्सी में अभी वो खेल रहा है श्रीमती बालाजी एशिया इंटरनेशनल फुटबॉल फेडरेशन के बेस्ट फुटबॉलर ऑफ द ईयर 2014 के अवार्ड डे के सम्मानित भी किया गया है और इंडियन वुमेन फुटबॉल टीम का कैप्टन भी रह चुके हैं मैडम स्वागत है मैडम हमारा सबसे पहला क्वेश्चन ये है कि आपने इंडियन टीम के लिए खेला है और क्लब के लिए भी खेला है बहुत कंट्री में आपने जाके खेला है आपको कैसा लग रहा है इतने पॉपुलर इंटरनेशनल क्लब रेंजर एफसी में खेलकर और आप कैसे कंपेयर करते हो स्पोर्ट्स के डेवलपमेंट को ग्लास को और इंडिया में नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायबिटीज को सुनने वाले को मेरे तरफ से नमस्ते मैं बहुत एक्साइटेड हूँ कि मुझे यहाँ मौका मिला इतने साल के बाद इतने बड़े क्लब में मेरे को खेलने बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है यहाँ का फैसिलिटी कोचिंग स्टाइल बहुत डिफरेंट है यहाँ का वेदर भी बहुत अलग है मैं पहले पहले थोड़ा एडजस्ट करना पड़ा मुझे थोड़ा टाइम लग रहा था मुझे एडजस्ट करने के लिए लेकिन अभी मैं सब ठीक है सबसे अच्छा ये कि यहाँ पे बहुत एक्सपीरियंस मिला हुआ है मुझे आपसे सुन के बहुत अच्छा लगा कि आपको विदेशी में जाके ग्लासको में खेल के आपको बहुत सारा एक्सपीरियंस लगा मैडम आपने अपना फुटबॉल का जो करियर है वो आपने कैसे स्टार्ट किया है मैं शुरुआत में कोई लड़की नहीं खेलती थी अपना डिस्ट्रिक्ट में मैं बॉयज के साथ मैंने स्टार्टिंग किया था और मेरा पापा और मेरा भाई फुटबॉल खेलते समय में देखा था फिर मैं धीरे धीरे बॉयज के साथ खेलना शुरू किया पापा और भैया को देख के भी शुरू किया और मेरा मैं और दीदी भी फुटबॉल खेलना शुरू किया तब से फिर मुझे मौका मिला अपना स्टेट के लिए रिप्रेजेंट करने के लिए सेलेक्ट 2002 में मुझे सिलेक्शन मिला था अपना मनीपुर रिप्रेजेंट करने के लिए आसाम जी गूगल में हुआ था आसाम जी टू में तभी मुझे अंडर 19 का बैट्समैन चैंपियनशिप था तो मुझे बेस्ट प्लेयर भी मिला था फाइनल होने के बाद एक ऑल इंडिया फुटबॉल फेडरेशन का एक मेंबर आया था तो हम सात लोगों को सिलेक्शन हुआ था नेशनल टीम रिप्रेजेंट करने के लिए ये हम लोग टू में जब फाइनल के बाद सिलेक्शन उन्होंने नाम दिया कि दो साल कोई टूर्नामेंट नहीं था जिसके अंदर 2005 में फिर हम लोग को रिकॉल बुलाया जो अंडर 17 का क्वालिफाई राउंड था कोरिया में हुआ था उसके बाद मैंने नेशनल टीम में रिप्रेजेंट करना शुरू किया मैंने अंडर 17 अंडर 19 और सैन्यास तीनों मैंने एक साल में मैंने शुरू किया टू में बालाजी आज तक आपके फुटबॉल करियर में सबसे अच्छा मेमोरेबल मोमेंट आप श्वेतों से शेयर कीजिए 2014 एंड 15 मुझे ऑल इंडिया फुटबॉल फेडरेशन ने ट्वाइस फुटबॉलर ऑफ द ईयर दिया हुआ था उसके साथ साथ ऑल मणिपुर फुटबॉल एसोसिएशन में फुटबॉलर ऑफ द ईयर मिला हुआ था मुझे तो बहुत सारे मुझे अवार्ड भी मिला हुआ था और बहुत सारे मैंने स्कोर भी कंशन किया और टूर्नामेंट भी जीता हुआ था मेरे ख्याल से मेरा मेमोरेबल वही था बहुत सारे मैंने कंट्री के लिए प्रॉफिन किया बहुत अच्छा लगा आपके फुल करियर के बारे में जानने के बाद आपसे ये सवाल पूछना चाहता हूँ कि इंडिया गवर्नमेंट ने बहुत सारे नई स्कीम निकाले हैं स्पोर्ट्स के लिए आपको क्या लगता है क्या ये स्कीम इम्पोर्टेंट है स्पोर्ट्स के डेवलपमेंट करने के लिए इस देश में ऑफर्स मेरे ख्याल से ये सब पॉलिसी और स्कीम बहुत हेल्पफुल है ये हमारे मोटिवेट करते हैं कि ज्यादा लोग सपोर्ट में पार्ट ले जितना हम लोग सपोर्ट में पार्ट लेंगे उतना ज्यादा हमारा कंट्री में बेहतर परफॉर्मेंस कर पाएंगे इंटरनेशनली तो मेरा ख्याल से जितना भी सपोर्ट करे हम लोग आगे अच्छा से अपना कंट्री को प्रॉफिट कर सके मैडम आपसे और सवाल पूछना चाहूंगा कि आप अभी मणिपुर से और इंडिया से बाहर स्कॉलेज में खेल रहा है आपको कभी देश का कभी इस देश के वासियों का कभी याद आ जाता है 
ये तो बिल्कुल ही है हमारा कंट्री में बहुत बहुत सारे भाषा होते रहते है अपना भाषा अपना मदर टंग और अपना ये तो होता है लेकिन फिर भी मैं यहाँ का भी भाषा अलग ही होता है कि इंग्लिश बोलता है थोड़ा लेकिन हम लोग इसको ट्विस्ट करके बात करते हैं इसको चीज लोग तो मैं पहले पहले थोड़ा मुश्किल थी लेकिन जितना भी मेरा फ्रेंड और जितना भी मेरा रूम रूम मैच हो टीम मैच कोचेस सब लोग मेरे को हेल्प करता है और बहुत अच्छा फ्रेंडली है तो हर मुझे कुछ दिक्कत नहीं होता है उन लोगों का साथ रहने में बात करते समय बहुत हेल्पफुल है उन लोग अच्छा मैडम जितना भी खेल है ओलंपिक हो या वर्ल्ड क्लब हो या कोई भी हो इसमें भारत का जितना भी स्थिति है उसको और आगे बढ़ाने के लिए और रैंकिंग हायर करने के लिए आपके ख्याल में हम लोग को जितना भी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन है उन लोगों को क्या करना चाहिए देखिए मेरे ख्याल से एक तो ये है कि एक तो आपने जो भी स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन की हो अपना हार्ड वर्क तो जरूरी करता होंगी तो जितना भी घर वालों या अपना जो देश का जो पीपल जितना भी सपोर्ट करे उतना ही जो मेहनत करने वाला जो प्लेयर से आगे बढ़ सकता है तो हम लोग कंट्री के लिए बहुत सारे प्लेयर्स लोग कंट्री प्राउड फील कर रही है तो और भी प्राउड फील कर सकता है तो इसलिए मैं चाहती हूँ कि सब लोग से विश कीजिए और सपोर्ट करते रहिए अच्छा मैडम एक और लास्ट में क्वेश्चन पूछना चाहता हूँ आप स्कॉटलैंड एवेंजर एफ के साथ अभी अभी कॉन्ट्रेक्ट किया है तो आपने भी वहाँ का बड़ा बड़ा टूर्नामेंट या कोई भी प्रोफेशनल लीग किसी में किस कोई भी लीग में खेला है जी मैंने तीन मैच हम लोग ने खेल चुका है तीन मैच हम लोग ने जीता हुआ है तो अभी अभी अक्टूबर 18 से शुरू होने वाला है प्रीमियर लीग होने वाला है तो मेरे ख्याल से हम लोग बहुत अच्छा प्रिपरेशन कर रही है उसके लिए तो हम आगे भी जाएंगे अच्छा रिजल्ट के साथ साथ मैडम नॉलेज डायरी को सुनने वालों के लिए आप कोई मैसेज देना चाहेंगे मैं सबको थैंक यू बोलना चाहती हूँ हमेशा मेरे को सपोर्ट करने के लिए और और पर्सन को सपोर्ट करने के लिए और ये भी बोलना चाहती हूँ कि हमेशा अपने ड्रीम्स को फॉलो करें एंड वर्क हार्ड यू विल और बी सक्सेसफुल सबको मेरे तरफ से एक ही कहना चाहती हूँ कि हमारे देश में खाली लड़कों को ज्यादा प्यार दिखाई देता है लेकिन ये नहीं होना चाहिए मेरा ख्याल से एक तरह देखना चाहिए जितना भी हम अभी वर्ल्ड में रिकॉर्ड बना रही है तो एक ही पॉइंट है तो मेरे ख्याल से जो जिसको करना चाहती है लड़कियाँ जो जिसको खेलना चाहते हो जो जिसको क्या कुछ भी करना चाहते हो उसको सपोर्ट मिले ये मेरे तरफ से बोलना चाहती हूँ ये था श्वेताओं हमारा आज का पर्सनलिटी ऑफ द वीक हमारा आज का पर्सनलिटी ऑफ द वीक है नागोम बला की नागोम बला भारत के महिला फुटबॉलर है और अभी स्कॉटलैंड के रेंजर एफसी में जर्सी नंबर टेन पे अभी फुटबॉल खेल रही है श्रीमती बालाजी भारत का पहला महिला फुटबॉलर है जो एक फॉरेन क्लब के साथ प्रोफेशनल कंट्रेक्ट रख के वो अभी फोर खेल रहे हैं थैंक यू नागम बालाजी आपके बहुत कीमती समय को निकाल के आपने नॉर्थ डायरी के पर्सनलिटी ऑफ द वीक के लिए आपसे बात करके बहुत अच्छा हुआ है श्रेताओं ये है नागम बालाजी जो मणिपुर से है और भारत का पहला महिला फुटबॉलर है जो एक फॉरेन क्लब के साथ अभी प्रोफेशनल कॉन्टेक्ट रख के जो फुटबॉल खेल रहा है थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच Today in our heritage section we have a report on the abang or the priest song of the Adi tribe of Arunachal Pradesh brought to you by Itanagar correspondent Rakesh Tole The land of rising sun Arunachal Pradesh can also be called the land of festival as with more than 125 major tribes and sub tribes in the state each having their own distinctive identity the state remains in a festive mood all throughout the year when i say distinctive identity it means each of these tribes has their own cultural identity and dialect different from each other among these colorful tribes Adi is one of the major tribes of Arunachal Pradesh Adi basically an agrarian society celebrates three major festivals namely Solung, Etergidi and Uin Aran and in these festivals Abang or the priest song is the most important part Omir Tatin an activist tells us that Abang represents all mythological aspects behind the origin and evolution of living being on earth Abang ko hum ek concept mein bol nahi sakte hai lekin ye ek shastra hai 
हमारा आदि का एक शस्त्र है इसमें आबांग में सौ बीस कैसे ये पृथ्वी को बनाया है एंड विद दैट वी हैव कम टू दी एंड ऑफ दिस एडिशन ऑफ नॉर्थ ईस्ट डायरी डू ज्वाइन अस अगेन नेक्स्ट वीक टू हेयर मोर स्टोरीज फ्रॉम दिस एनचॉन्टिंग पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया टिल देन गुड बाय